Hi everybody, it's Daryl again. Um, just, I was looking at the um, the idea of this bridge that goes over um, Auckland Harbour Bridge. It's a bridge being built beside, exactly beside the current bridge, so that cyclists and walkers can cross cross the bridge. And I just, I just think that it won't be as good as what people think it will be. I mean, it will be great. There will totally be five and a half thousand people who really love it. And then there'll be the other 1.5 million people in the city who have to pay for it. And that's the thing that I just find that always kind of upsetting. There's, it just, I don't know, to me it just, it lacks imagination in a way. And I don't think it will be a very good tourist attraction. I'm going to so go so far as to say it will not be a tourist attraction at all in any way. Um, and uh, I base that on having walked over the Sydney Harbour Bridge. It is not that enjoyable. Um, okay. So anyway, so I'm saying that I'm saying that this bridge is not a great idea and but I have an alternative and so that's what I always want I want solutions um, so here's my solution I'm gonna build a really fantastic cable car um, like they have on a ski field or as people have been to Queenstown or Rotorua and been on the skyline gondola there um, you get to enjoy um, this fantastic views from a car and I would go so far as to say what you want is one of these dual line cars like this that has two wires supporting the vehicle so that it's nice and stable that way if it's windy or stormy or well maybe not stormy if it's windy or the weather's inclement it will be a very um, comfortable ride um, so this is the thing I want you to have in mind when I talk about what I'm going to talk about of course um, there's also the uh, the single wire ones, which are much more like your your uh, standard ones. So let, let me just see if I can find that. That might be this. No, that's not it. Hang on. Uh, it would be a detachable gondola lift. That would be the kind of thing. So this. So these are great as well. Um, the only thing I don't like about this is it swings around in the wind a little bit more. Um, Let's have, have, a, have a look at some pictures, just so that you can have in your mind what it is. So that's that's what it looks like when you build one in a city. Um, that's a bit of a mountainous city. On a ski field, you've got nice big windows. Um, you can see a lot. You can have racks on the outside to carry people's bikes on these smaller ones. But if you've got the bigger pods, you can just take your bicycle on the inside. Um, and you could have some bike racks on the outside of them as well uh, for when they're busy. But this is the kind of thing um, that uh, I'd like to imagine. So this is a single wire, um, a single wire detachable gondola. These are going to be smaller and carry eight or twelve people per car. And then there was the other one. I'll just go back to which was it? Was this thing? I think. Go back to this got the two line one and it's a more stable comfortable ride and safer as well because it's got two cables you've got got a bit of a backup cable if um, any in if you should have any technical problems good so that's <clears throat> that's it so <coughs> and this is my <clears throat> exercise in thinking differently so the greater or I, I looked at one of the Greater Auckland documents. They project six and a half thousand daily crossings by year 2048 on a bridge. So we're, we're talking about 25 years away or something um, on the bridge path. And I think that's such a tiny number um, and that you could lift half that number of people per hour in a pod lift. So the detachable gondola lift there. Um, and... Just to compare, the Skywalker that they built on Mount Ruapehu, so this is a one of those single line detachable gondola lifts, it cost $25 million and it's 1.8 kilometers long. And they made it, it's quite pretty because it's in a national park, so the, the hub buildings are kind of quite nice. And you could probably build a gondola line strung under the current bridge or you could just build it beside the bridge on par, um, big posts. And um, it would be way cheaper. I mean, like a third of the price for a detachable gondola lift and probably half the price for the two-wire one. Um, 
you could make it go from Victoria Park to Akaranga um, Drive Transport Hub and um, it would be a much better tourist attraction because it would come close to the middle of the city and you could ride it from near the middle of the CBD so people would take the ride out. Plus when you get to Takapuna there's something to do there when you get to the other end. Um, whereas if you built this walk and cycle path and you're a tourist you're just going to walk over Auckland Harbour Bridge to get to the other side or you probably only just walk halfway across and then you turn around and walk back again once you've taken in the view. Um, and uh, of course um, if, if you if you're a capitalist you'll be annoyed because you don't make any money from that and if you're a socialist you'll be totally happy with um, uh, the 5,000 people who cross it every day having the other one and a half million people who live in Auckland pay for that I don't know <laughs> there's no winning went way too political on that one anyway um, where do we go um, yeah, so the, the, the largest kinds of double wire gondola lifts can transport 5,000 people per hour and single wire systems carry about 2,500 people per hour. That's the budget option. If you just built that, I'd be happy. Um, you can build either one for less than the price of this bridge. If you built the line that went all the way to Takapuna, it'd be 6.8 kilometres. If you went right into Takapuna City, it'd probably be about 7.8 kilometres. I think it's about another kilometre past the, is it called Akaranga Bus Transport Hub? Um, anyway, 6.8 kilometres about, is about the tenth of the length of the longest cable car line in operation around the world. It's quite a lot of cable car lines that are very long. Um, they use for transport in various places where it's too difficult to build roads. Um, you could build a, there's going to be fast ones. I said a two wire one. There's faster ones and slower ones. You can get, some of them could go 40 kilometers per hour, but the real practical one you're going to get is going to go 25 kilometers per hour, irrespective of what I wrote on that slide. Um, you can run at full speed on, on peak and you can slow down for sightseeing off peak. So you could run it fast um, during the um, during the morning and after evening peaks if you're going to use it as an actual public transport system. And then you could slow it down during the middle of the day so that people can take in the view if they're just taking the ride for sightseeing. Sing single, single line cable cars or gondolas are so cheap that you could build a second line Devonport to Takapuna plus the one over the Auckland Harbour Bridge to Victoria Park for the same price as what you could build this bridge. Um, you could even probably build a loop that loops from the Auckland CBD over to the Devonport Peninsula, up the peninsula to Takapuna, down from Takapuna, um, down across the Auckland Harbour Bridge and back around to the Auckland CBD for the same price as building this bridge. You could build a two-line one which would run in much more difficult weather um, for, I don't know, I'm going to say 50% more or double the money or something. But it would also mean that you would um, you'd save money on running the ferries that go across the harbour and you would, um, what else would you do? You would, um, uh, I don't know, some other advantages. Let me think about what it is. Oh yeah. Anyway, just to, here's some here's some advantages I prepared earlier. Um, they have stable speeds, so the, there's no cross traffic, so they have an expected time. When you get on and get off, you'll know how long it will take. Um, gondola lifts are ten times safer than cars per passenger mile. <clears throat> um, gondola lifts are powered by electricity, so there's zero emissions in operation. Bikes can be racked on the outside of the pots. Gondola ride would be more enjoyable in the rain and in breezy weather than being exposed to 45 metres above the middle of the harbour. Um, who would be using this pathway in rough weather? And um, a dual cable system, which is more expensive, could run when the Auckland Harbour Bridge would possibly even close due to the weather being bad. So those dual cable ones can run in wind speeds up to 100 kilometers per hour. 
um, you don't have to hire a government department of consultants to get these things installed. So the companies that design these for ski fields will have people who work for them who know what needs to be built and they'll know how to price it up and they'll know what the foundations need to be. They'll be able to give you some concentration on building it. They build probably dozens or maybe hundreds of them a year. Um, if, if you build... Um, the single wire, if you just built the basic single wire detachable gondola lift that went over the bridge, you'd save two thirds of the money that you were going to spend on, on the bridge. Um, if you put that money in a bank account and got some investment people to invest it wisely, they would earn enough money so that everybody could have $200 off a bicycle every 10 years until the end of time. So if you wanted every, so you, your option is you can build a cycle bridge that allows five people to, 5,000 people a day to cross the Auckland Harbour Bridge, or you could build the cable car and save the money, and the money that you save would be enough to buy every child a bicycle in the whole country every five years. You know, you could buy them two or three bicycles um, in the time that they go to school and high school. Um the, the system, some of these systems can actually have stops along the line. So you could have a station at Point Erin Park and Stratford Park. So basically the parks at either end of the Auckland Harbour Bridge. And that would allow people to get on. Is that how you spell getting? I don't know. Getting? Let's try that. Allow for people getting on and off, not only at the terminal ends. Um, if the importance of the bridge crossing is for exercise, customers could run or cycle the majority of their commute but be lifted from Stratford Park to Point Erin Park. Uh, it just puzzles me why the Skypath Bridge is so expensive for re the relatively few people who would use it. Um, it'd be good to have the bridge crossing, but it's actually kind of in a sad location for tourism because when you go across the bridge, even so, like in, in Sydney, when I walked across Sydney um, Bridge, at least there's there's something at the other end. There's some cafes and restaurants, and um, you can walk around the waterfront a little bit at the other end. There's something actually to do there. Um, another thing about this bridge is um, using it at night time. Um, will people be really happy? To you know, you might get a good view on a beautiful summer night. You'll get amazing views of the city um, or the city lights, city views. They'll be really great, but um, it won't be really comfortable. You know, a lot of a lot of commuters will take a bus home after work, um, and it, yeah, as I was saying, it's not my priority to walk over the Harbour Bridge uh, at, at at night time. I just don't think that would be an enjoyable activity. Um, uh, yeah, the cycle path. It's just not accessible for tourists. Um, you have to walk quite a long way to get to the base of the bridge. Um, and I thought it was an hour and a half walk from Auckland CBD. But uh, it turns out that it's actually, it's actually worse than that. Um, where is... Where is my map I prepared earlier? Here we go. Um, so, so the walking time, and like the dry, the driving time. There we go. It's about it's about eight nineteen kilometers if you go all the way to Takapuna City. Um, there's not really a way that you can currently walk this, um, but I would imagine it would take at least an hour if you just walk power walked it would take like an hour and a half to do this walk over to Takapuna um, if you just walked from there to there and back you're still looking at something like an hour and a half walk at least it, it, it's quite you it's quite a big walk um, to, to just give you a better imagery of what I'm actually proposing is You'd build a you build a cable car station in this park. Yes, you will lose a couple of cricket grounds. Maybe you could just build it over here and have the cables go over the motorway. Um, there's a, what, a skate park and a basketball court there. So you could you could build this thing here, or you could you could wind it back. You could actually build it in the car park. I think that's a gym or something. You could build it on that car park there and have the cables go across this park and go straight up here. And this is a current 
current walking pathway as far as I can tell. Um, looks like, yeah, it looks like that's open to the public. And it would go across here. Um, these houses are actually up on a hill, so if you ran relatively low pylons at this point, it wouldn't be too much of a visual obstruction for the millionaires who live in those houses. Um, and then go, goes around there. So there's, um, there's this park at, at this end. Um, what did we... That's... Um, um, Point Erin Park so you could build a station here or something I don't you couldn't build it really over there uh, you kind of want to keep the cable lines going kind of straight if you can um, and then go over the bridge it's you know I think it's like 40 45 meters high in the middle there it's made so that big ships can go under it and then you see the walk, you, what do you, you get over here, but there's nothing here to do once you get to the other side. There's, there's, there might be one restaurant or a cafe or something somewhere around here. Um, and then, well, you, you just have this beautiful walk along the side of this motorway. I'm, being, I'm critiquing this quite, <laughs> quite hard. But if you had a cable car, see the cable car, you could just have it up here on pylons and you'd get let's flip it around you'd get this view can we see the view zoom out there you go you get you get to see this view um out the side of the cable car um from here as you go across so continuing up um you'd have this thing go up here and then you'd you'd have the you'd have the station here you'd either either swing the thing across um, the road and you could I don't know what we've got there some water settling ponds or something you know you could you could build the station on this traffic island or or you could um, build it in this park by the station here so this is the bus transport hub that's where the buses hub to and that's where you get on this is the northern bus corridor so this all looks like a motorway but in fact, this is a motorway and this is a bus only road. There's a two lane road through here for buses only that, that go up um, go up through the North Shore. And if you if you built if you built a station here with a stop, then you could bring the cable way over here and you could bring the cables up over this estuary. See it's not it's not too much of a environmental impact. And you could bring it in here and there's some parks here. Um, you could you could put the station in in this park, and so that way you'd be you'd be in Takapuna. Um, so you'd there's something here. There's there's um, sh big shopping centre in uh, this one or both of those blocks. It's a shopping centre, and you've got the the main street shops there with cafes and restaurants, and and it's just a short walk over to here, and you're you're at the beach. So you've got the beach looking out at uh, Rangitoto Island over there. So I just it just strikes me that if you're spending that much money, you could have something that would be a lot more enjoyable. Yeah, it would cost more. It would cost money to run after you build it, but it would um, be much cheaper to build in the first place. I don't know. It just doesn't seem very imaginative to me. And then the, the other thing, like I was saying, is that you could run another line if, if you wanted to just use it for public transport. You could run another line. So so if you if you um, came up here, you could you could cut across here. And there's that looks like a cemetery. You could you could build the line ac across here. So following these bridge that bridge path, you build the line across there. <coughs> And then you could have a station on this peninsula. You could build it across there. Then, then you're down over on this uh, western part of Devonport, and you could you could bring it across over to the city. Although that's just pie in the sky. I, I don't think it would be very practical to do that in reality. But it would be more than easy to build a line that goes up there. Just just a different idea. Anyway, that's all I've got to say about that. I think really have thrashed that topic out. Thanks for watching.